Hey folks, it's Artwolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing of a new and exciting product here for you today. Just arrived. Napoleon invades Spain. This is volume 11, uh, but they're not released necessarily in volume order of the Library of Napoleonic Battles from the Operational Studies Group and designer Kevin Zucker. This is the inheritor of the great tradition of the classic Napoleon's Last Battles quad from SPI um, with a evolved system, let's say, and uh, a, a bit more chrome than Napoleon's Last Battles provided, but, but not an excessive amount. I mean, they didn't totally bloat this or anything. Uh, we have a standard two-inch box. As usual for OSG, these do not come shrink-wrapped. And we have what I've always felt to be kind of a cute thing, uh, they have a French title, which is a different title than Napoleon Invades Spain, L'Armée d'Espagne, uh, which means the Army of Spain, as far as I can tell. Um, looks like the wrap on the, at least on this copy, the wrap on that's a little bit loose. So let's see what we get in here. Big stack of stuff. Uh, we got a Napoleon Invades Spain update. Looks like... Uh, it is one of the, the game-specific rules, so let's make sure that ends up back in the box. There's four battles. Okay, so on the box, there's four battles included. Vimiero, Espinosa, Tudela, and La Coruña, but we will see when we look at the scenario book how much is actually included. Because the scenario, the actual scenario book tends to include more than just that. Uh, okay, here is Cor, Cor the Coruna, La Coruña map. Coruña. Uh, this is, of course, a very famous battle, um, one of the early-ish battles of the Peninsular War um, from 1809. This is the battle in which, uh, a battle in which a British force is attempting to evacuate, and a French force is attempting to stop that from happening. And uh, Sir John Moore, who is the British commander, ends up sacrificing his own life to uh, ensure that in, in the British can, in fact, withdraw safely. Here is the Tudela map, which is a full-size map. I, I should point out that, and this is one of the things I like about the series, is they're not hesitant to do this. This is an 11 by 17 map that the La Coruña battle takes place on, which I think is great. Um, on the other hand, we have, at the exact opposite end of that, we have the very, very full-sized Tudela map on which the Battle of Tudela takes place. And this is 1808. Uh, here's the Espinosa map. Looks like there is just one. Uh, but this is another full-sized map. Now, I'll spread this out. These are these are sort of portrait formats, so I can't quite do that on this tabletop. But uh, I want to give you a sense of what the maps and the art style looks like. I personally really, really, really like these maps. Uh, they are not what I would describe as fancy, but it's my opinion that too often we, in terms of wargaming components, at least some publishers do, um, tend to go with fancy in opposition to good or easy to use. Uh, these are both very attractive and, from experience, quite easy to use. So uh, I think these are top-notch maps. And they're on sort of a, a quite nice cream-colored paper, too, which I also like. Uh, and then we have the Miero, which is another 11 by 17 map, which is very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, so what else do we have in this box of goodies? Here is the Library of Napoleonic Battles series rules version 7.34. Uh, Want to say this is the first time I've seen that? Particular version? Uh, I'd have to check that, to be honest. Uh, there, the, the version differences in these rules at this point are minuscule. So uh, if you have version 7.31 or something like that, it is not to be fretted over. Uh, full color, actually. Um, as is typical for uh, OSG, uh, you know, it's not like lavish use of color or anything like that, but I, I consider it effective use of color. Uh, the system, this system, I think, is fairly easy to play. Um, it is a little more complicated than, like I said, um, than the Napole the classic Napoleon's Last Battles um, rules, but not, not by much. Uh, we have an inspection chart inspected by Denali. I'm... 
disappointed that Caveman Andy did not inspect this one, although, as we'll see, he did inspect the other one. All right, so this is the uh, study folder, a.k.a. playbook. So let's take a look here. And we have the four basic scenarios. Uh, we have... It looks like we have those four battles plus a, plus a campaign game, actually, which runs from August 1808 to January 1809. So this kind of looks like it's the, the running campaign to force that, uh, that British army off the peninsula, actually, which is neat. But what we might have is looking at... Okay, peninsula-specific rules. Let's see here. Okay. Battle of Vimiero, of which there's a couple variations. There's a, a French free setup, and here's an approach to battle version. So what that means is you can either play like the base scenario, which is the battle, or you could play the approach to battle scenario, which gives you significant amount of extra time before that so that you both sides can position their forces for the battle. Um, a lot of people like to play the approach to battle, and I think this is a really good scale. Uh, this is sort of like a grand tactical scale, uh, for, for whatever that means to you. Um, grand tactical is a very imprecise term, but um, it's a brigade-level game, basically, brigades, divisions. Um, so it kind of straddles the difference between, like, an operational game and a tactical game uh, in, I think, a very pleasing way. That is the kind of thing that can go wrong very easily. But given this particular topic uh, of Napoleonic battles, I think it totally works. Um, so these approach to battles give you a little bit more room to do that operational stuff, is, what, is where we're going with that. Um... Espinoza, we have an approach to battle version as well. Uh, here we have a knight withdrawal variant. Um, so we only have the four battles plus the campaign game, but we do, it looks like we have variants for a lot of these, uh, plus approach to battles for three of the four at least. La Coruña, probably not, because the map's so small. You see, there's no approach to battle for La Coruña. But there is for Tudela. And then we have historical notes. These are always, in, in Kevin Zucker's games, these are always very well done. Very, very much worth your time. A nice-looking bibliography here with Oman's History of the Peninsular War, which is the one I have on the topic we haven't read yet. So, uh, so we have... Let's do the counters last. I like to do the counters last. We have all kinds of displays and tracks and stuff like that. So we have the... Turn record tracks, single sided for Vimero, for Espinosa, for Tudela. La Coruña is on the first one, too, actually. And then we have these setup cards. Um, these are, I found, uh, the, the print's really small, so if you have a if you have super, super bad eyesight, it's not, it's a little hard to read, but it's clear. So even I, who have fairly terrible eyesight, I gotta tell you, uh, don't have too much trouble with these. This is a lot, lot less intimidating setup cards than it looks like, because, so if you're, pl if you're playing this uh, La Coruña campaign, you only need to look at this column. So we, can, we ignore all this, just have to worry about that, and these are the hexes that these particular units set up in. So let's do this here. This would be the, the French card, and the sort of salmon-colored card would be the Anglo-Allied Army of Portugal, and then the white one would be, or eh, it looks like it's a little bit off way, would be the Spanish Army, Spanish Army of Spain. Okay, we have casualty record tracks for the French and the Coalition. We have our general player aid cards. Here's a use a universal for the series uh, display to put the you can actually cut this in half can't you looks like you can um yeah that's neat okay i never noticed that before you could actually cut this in half and have two different ones uh or you could use one half, the top half for the french and the bottom half for the coalition if you wanted but this is where the, your casualties go um and a, uh, another card for the weather table single-sided this card is double-sided, and then it's got all the combat table notes. So almost the whole game runs off this this sheet right here, plus the notes off the back. Um, uh, 
something I'm noticing is not in here is the deck of cards. It is actually not on the contents. Now, I have the cards. I mean, because it's the same deck now in every game. So that's interesting. So these are the card addendas. So is the idea now that the cards aren't included and you have to just order a deck of the cards? I mean, I guess that's okay. Um, since the only way to get these things is for to, to order them directly from OSG anyway. Um, I have like one deck, the deck of cards in every other game. So every other one came with cards. Then again, this one was a little less expensive than they typically are too. So if that's the, that's the trade-off. Maybe that's okay. Buy the deck of cards once, use it with the whole series, which is the intention now. And yeah, require the universal deck not included. Can be ordered at napoleongames.com. Okay. That is the OSG website, napoleongames.com. All right. That's new. I didn't expect that actually. And then here's the other, uh, the, like the full player aid card, which includes both what we just saw with this table and the other miscellaneous tables or, or reminders. They're not really tables. And then the TEC. And then here's your order slips. Uh, lest you get the wrong idea, this is not a like gamers style order or written orders system. That's not exactly what this is. Uh, you have a an activation system that your units can forego if they are under orders, which you write down to march to a specific hex. Okay. And then here's the victory worksheet to calculate your VPs. Here is the card index thing that you apply to the individual card decks. And basically what this is telling you is which cards to leave in, which cards to put in, which cards to take out. Actually, no, this is like the general scenario information, um, which is also cool. Double side. Oh, that's what this is. That's why I got that mixed up. Um, this tells you which cards to take out of the, de the universal deck. And this just gives you the scenario information for the general four scenarios. All right. Now, um, two counter sheets, as is absolutely standard for this series. Um, every game in the series that I have, and I have all of them except for the very first one called The Coming Storm, um, have two counter sheets. So, uh, we have, we can see, we have the French here, we have the British here, we have the Spanish here. I don't see Portuguese. Uh, which is perhaps not that surprising, but there's some miscellaneous miners and stuff like that. And then we have a whole sheet of markers and stuff. Uh, this is one series where I keep my markers in a uh, out-of-the-box tray rather than trying to put them in the box. Um, because that way I can have... I have a whole, whole lot of games in this series at this point. So I can keep uh, one tray for those as opposed to trying to organize them... Uh, because of the decks of cards, you can normally only get one counter tray in these boxes. So I will have to see if I need a copy of the uh, Universal card deck. I might just order two of them, because why not? Um, so, uh, and then you got a sheet of markers here. Um, these look completely standard OSG, um, relatively thickish brown core stock. I, I noticed... I have heard that some people have issue have had issues with OSG's counters in the past um, in terms of like sometimes they seem to be like heavily pixelated or the printing quality is not high enough. I do not I have never observed that personally in any of my games from them. Um, I see zero registration. I mean even right in these places right here where you have the opportunity for registration issues to, to be an issue, I see no problems whatsoever over here, over here zero issues with these counter sheets. So this looks fantastic. This is um, this is my favorite Napoleonic series of games, the, the Library of Napoleonic Battles. For me, it strikes an ideal optimal balance between high playability and good detail and very good hist historiography and um, 
well, not being too hard to get. Although, like I said, you do kind of have to go through OSG to get them, uh, unless you get them through the secondary market. You might be able to get them from Noble Knight, for example, but I would just order them directly from OSG because you're they're the same price anyway, to to within a dollar or two. Um, so, brand new 2021 release, Napoleon Invades Spain from the Operational Studies Group and Kevin Zucker. Uh, I would like to thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe to the channel and click the little bell icon to get notified when new content comes out. If you would like to do more to support our Rule Slayer, please do check out the merch store and Patreon links in the video description. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.